Welcome, Matt O'Keefe. Uh, obviously, the champ, goat. We love all that. Matt Fraser. Um, just wanted to take some time to catch up. You know, it's been almost a year since your last win. Crazy to think about. Yeah, that it's you, been that long. And you're now retired. So, what, what's that been like for you? Like, especially having kind of gone through, you know, that second stage. You, you know, attended some of those semifinals. What, what's it been like being on the sidelines? You know, at first, it took some adjusting. You know, because you just have more time in the day. You know, having to say, having to do certain things or say no to certain things, or you know, that wasn't a decision I had to make in the day anymore that was it was just what I did and after you know six years you're not even thinking about it so you know going on a trip or staying up late or eating what I want or not eating you know those when the question got presented to me it just reverted back to what's best for competition what's going to help my performance and then you know you have to remind yourself like oh that's that's not a thing for me anymore I can, I'm able to go on a trip and not worry about missing training. I'm able to eat or not eat if it negatively affects my performance. Um, you know, so that took a while to get used to. Working out not for peak level performance and working out for fun, for health, for fitness, that took a while to get used to. Um, you know, I used to always have to pump myself up for going into the gym because I knew I was going to bring 100% intensity, 100% effort. I was going to give everything I had. So trying to relearn how to go into the gym and it's like, it's okay to talk in between sets. It's okay to go at a sub max effort where I don't, I'm not gasping for my next breath of air. I'm fighting off this lactic acid pump, you know? Um, so that took some adjusting but I'm falling, I'm falling right into the groove. Uh, <laughs> I found my stride. So, you know, been to some of the qualifying competitions over the last couple of weeks, having so much fun, you know, seeing my friends that are competitors and I'm, I'm excited to see them doing well because they're not my competition anymore. You know, working with some of the new athletes coming into the space and, you know, kind of laying out you know, some of the mistakes that I made or some of the things I wish I did differently so that they don't have to, you know, I'm trying to progress their performance because now their success in the space has no impact on what I'm doing. So I'm like, no, I want to show you the things I've learned over the years. So, you know, it's, it's been nothing but good times so far. It's been a lot of fun. I'm, I'm excited to make it part, part of my routine, part of my schedule to keep traveling, keep interacting, doing all these fun things. You, you, um, again, you've had some time, you know, have you really been able to, you know, reflect on and, you know, uh, be proud of and, and, you know, soak in what you've accomplished? I mean, we talk, we, we spent all kinds of time reminiscing when I come up here or like we're traveling, we have a lot of fun yeah. looks back. Have you, has it really sunk in that what you've accomplished? In some ways, yes. In most ways, no. Um, so in the ways that, you know, it doesn't affect me or it hasn't sunk in or anything like that, it's because when I was competing, I traveled very little. I had very little interaction with anyone. You know, I'm, I'm already in a homebody. I'm already an introvert. And now give me an excuse of this will help your performance. You're going to stay home and train for the next six months. I'm more than happy to do it. Um, so, you know, I had very little interaction with what was going on outside. And so a lot of people saw what I was doing through, you know, videos or social media or whatever it was, but I had very little, I saw very little of how that affected people. You know, the people I saw on a day to day basis were you, Sammy, maybe a handful of friends, but the people that I kept in my circle weren't there because of my performance and because of what I was doing. Whether I won or lost, you guys were there. Whether I'm competing or retired, you guys are there. Um, 
so, you know, the people I interacted with never cared. You know, they, they cared for me, but they didn't care about my performance. Um, but now that I'm traveling around, you know, I'll be in a public place, I'll be on a trip and, you know, I'll get those comments and it's kind of like, oh, you know, you know who I am or, oh, that's cool that you liked what I did, you know, anything like that. So, um, I'm seeing it a bit now, um, but at the same time, that's not what I base my character around. That's not what I, you know, base my values off of. You know, I knew that my sports career would end someday. It's any sports career is going to end someday. Um, so I didn't want to make my personal identity about me and about me winning because then what do I have when I leave? So, you know, I built up the values outside and, you know, my, my whole mantra of hard work pays off. That's not hard work in the gym pays off on the competition floor. It's not, no, it's what, whatever activity I'm doing, I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. I'm going to give it everything I have. And so as the day I retired from competition, I didn't retire. I just retired from competition. I just pointed that, that energy and that focus into other things. Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, and Sammy, myself, you know, others in your tight circle, I, I think it's been fun for us to watch uh, you open up a little bit. And I think like some of your now business stuff too kind of ties into that, but you've always been very intent on being very tight, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it seems like, and I know you are because we spend a lot of time together, like you're having a lot of fun with this, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you know, you're, you're checking a lot of boxes and I know that, that, you know, there's a lot of plans for you to, you know, experience a lot of things that you put to the side, right? Mm -hmm. What well, what is going on? Like what's, you know, I mean, what's next? Like, what, what's currently going on? What have you had a fun with in, in, in these last few months? I mean, what's, what's not going on? You know, it's, uh, you know, I have a lot more, a lot more time and energy uh, available in the day. So it's every day, it's, you know, different opportunities are popping up and I'm just jumping in with both feet, you know, whether that's traveling to hang out with friends, traveling to competitions, working with some new athletes, I got a couple businesses I'm running, um, you know, actually being home and spending time with Sammy, uh, you know, it's just, everything is new. Um, like since I've known Sammy, since I've known you, it's when I was competing. So Sammy has seen glimpses of relaxed me for, you know, one month out of the year where we get to go and have fun and do activities um you know something as small as going for a walk you know that was not in the cards before it was like when i wasn't training i'm relaxing i'm refilling the tanks for the next training session so when she would say hey you want to go for a walk it's like no absolutely not like not even a little bit um how's the pro like talk i mean everybody here knows what you know hwpo has launched people now like really get to see a little bit of what was behind the curtain. Has that been fun for you? And you've been working with some of the youth in, in the sport. Like, how's, how's that going, the whole programming piece? I mean, programming in general, I, I was going to do it because, you know, I felt like it was a very easy progression. Um, you know, I wanted projects there so that the day I retired, I had something to occupy my time. I had something to d direct my energy towards. And I honestly didn't know if it would be a long-term play or if I would do it for six months and kind of be like, oh, I don't really care for this. Um, but very quickly, once I started, you know, planning out the first phase of programming, it was fun. It was, the same problem solving that I did while I was competing. You know, it's just one big Tetris puzzle of, all right, how do I fit all these things in? How, did, how does this workout complement this one? So how much do I need to space these two that don't complement each other? And it was, and it took me right back to my college days of just being at a desk with just notepads everywhere, calculator out, pens going, spreadsheets up, um, so it was a lot of fun and then giving it, pe 
to people to test. You know, I'm going through some of it. I'm having other people test it, different skill levels, getting their feedback and making the tweaks accordingly. And then, you know, doing the calls with all the members of, you know, how like, Hey guys, this is what we're doing and this is why we're doing it. This is the intent of this piece because you can give the same workout to five people and they'll get five different results depending on how they attack it or how they scale it or you know what was their approach going into it. And so I wanted to give the intent, the stimulus, the desired output from every piece and giving that explanation to the athletes. So it has been so much more fun than I thought it was going to be. Um, so, you know, dedicating a lot more time and energy to that. Um, yeah. And then, you know, working with some of the younger athletes in the space, you know, just reaching out, you know, I'm not reaching out to all of them, yeah. but there's, there's the occasional one that, uh, that I reached out to and I was like, Hey, let's get together. You know, I want you and your coach to come, come here or I'll meet you, you know, if we're in the same area at the same time and basically giving them an analysis, you know, kind of playing like the consultant role of, uh, I want to watch you train. And then I'm going to give you a sheet of notes of what I thought you were good at. What can you work on? You know, any, anything that can help. And then putting them through some tests to try to find deficiencies and give them even more, you know, direct input on what they can work on. Um, so, I mean, that's been so much fun because I, I haven't worked with other athletes in the past. You know, I've worked, I've worked with a female counterpart as a training partner, but I've never programmed for anyone else. I've never worked out with, you know, another male competitor in season or, you know, been willing to show them the cards that I was of what I was using of, you know, why am I doing this workout? Why am I, you know, scaling at this? Why am I choosing this weight? How am I structuring my, my program? How am I dealing with my frequency of everything? So it's been fun to just put all that out on the table to a select few without the fear of repercussions of I'm building a better enemy, you know? So it's, it's, it's been, it's been very gratifying. Does that, does that ever come across your mind? You know, you know, we've seen some recent stuff where you've been, you know, helping some of the younger guys. Do you ever look at some of these guys and, and does it, do you think about like them challenging what you've built and worked your ass off for your entire career? Like, you know, what if they win six and seven? Like, do you, yeah, I mean, that's such a massive I mean, on taking, but does that ever come across your mind? I mean, that's the goal. Right. That's, that's the intent of me trying to help them. Um, you know, However many years ago, a, a 225 snatch was huge in the sport. Right. And then the new standard became 275, then 300, and now people are hitting 315. I just watched a guy hit like 340 at a competition. So the bar is going up and up, and it's, it's the same as any sport of, you know, the four-minute mile was impossible. And then one guy hit it, and then everyone hit it. And, you know, someone else's success doesn't take away from mine. Yeah. What I did in the sport is done. I, I did what I came to do. I had a great time doing it and I'm moving on from that aspect of it. So if I can help another competitor run sub five minute miles, start squat cleaning 405, like breaking all of my benchmarks, well, fantastic. You're gonna have a very bright future in the sport. You're not taking anything away from me. You know, I, I won five, I won by a certain margin of victory and, you know, I, I did what I came to do. Um, you know, if I were still on the competition floor, yeah, I'm not going to tell you my secrets. I'm not going to try to make you better so you can beat me, but I'm done. That phase of my life is over. So let's try to make, make you have as bright of a future in the sport as possible. I think that's probably something that I, I, you know, I've been asked this a lot. I know you are too. People are like, you know, their optics on this or there's some confusion sometimes. Like, like, how is it that easy for you to just walk away from like how far you were ahead? And you know what, what, like you just, and I know I'm inside and I know what the process was for that, but you walked away seemingly 
you know, in a position where you, you know, you didn't have to do much but sustain and probably continue to be on top of the sport. And you walked away from it at that point. Yeah. Is there a question of yeah, of like, why, but, but, how, yeah, like you know, why, why, yeah, why now? Like what, like why not? You know, another couple of years where you know you were healthy, you were on top. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah, you know, like up until my last training session before the games, I was, I was hitting PRs. I was getting better. I was shaving time off my mile. I was adding weight to all of my lifts, you know, I was still progressing in the right direction. Um, I mean, there's a lot of different aspects to it. You know, there's like, I wanted to make sure I ended on my terms. I wanted to make sure to end while I still had a love for the sport that before resentments got too strong that when I left or I was forced to leave, I never wanted to look back. I never wanted to have any involvement. So I wanted to make sure that the love I had felt for so long was still there. Um, I, was, I was ready for that next phase of life. Um, you know, it wasn't just me sacrificing a lifestyle to, to get where I wanted to be. It was, my friends and family around me. I wasn't an active member in those relationships for most of the year, for the last five or six years. Um, and I think, you know, the, the question was there sometimes of, all right, what if I pulled back my volume in training? What if I cut my season shorter? What if, like basically, what if I gave 80%? Because in last years, in my last year competing, I was just a hair away from having enough points to win first place and third. That was my goal going into the last days. I want, I want to have enough points to win the gold and the bronze. And so the question, the easy question is, could I have pulled back, dedicated less to this and have it been good enough? And I know how I operate. I know how I think I know what triggers my insecurities. And I know that if I did that throughout the season, I wouldn't be able to sleep. I wouldn't be happy. Even if I coasted through and got gold, the gold doesn't taste good because you won. The gold tastes good because you know that was your best. You know you gave everything. Um, and I hope that's the position I'm in no matter what place I got. I hope that's what I deserve and I hope I earned it. Um, so the thought of just doing enough, I know I wouldn't be happy with that. I know I wouldn't be able to sleep well at night. And basically for the last couple of years, most decisions aren't made unless I know I can lay my head on the pillow and have peace at night. So, you know, got to end it on my terms. I'm healthy. One of my goals with the sport was to never have an injury that would leave me with a permanent limp for the rest of my life. I want to live a life after my sports career, after my competitive sports career. Um, and so, you know, I was able to do that. You know, I had a goal early on in the sport was, all right, I want to break that record. I want to, I want to win five. I want to win five consecutive. Um, the margin of victory became the new standard for me. Um, and you know, I, I, I just checked all those boxes as I went through. And as soon as I did it, it was like, okay, time to move on to the next thing. You talked about a couple of things there that I think tie in, you know, um, there's been, even throughout your whole career, a lot of talk about your, your foundation, where you started, you had an injury when you started. And you know, you and your friends at Nike have talked a little bit about this idea of broken to best, um, you know, as a theme um, for really your retirement and your career. But, but, you know, for those that probably haven't heard it, I don't think they realize, like, you've talked about this injury, I broke my back and like, you know, I came back, but I don't think people realize how broken you were. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, because you talk about like now I'm retired and healthy and like you have context for that because there was a point in which, you know, when I first met you and you told me the story, you're like, you know, they didn't even, I wasn't even going to run again. 
you know? Mm -hmm. And here you are, the fittest man in history, the best ever at something. What was it like back then? Like, I mean, and, and now's a good time to reflect on it. Like, you're at the, you've hit the top of a sport and you're a low. Yeah, you know, you know, there's a lot of aspects to that story that really made drastic life changes for me. You know, I was, I had one singular goal when I was a teenager, go to the Olympics. That was my only goal. My sport was weightlifting and it wasn't an option for me. It wasn't like, I hope I call it. It's like, no, I'm going to the Olympics. Best place to train for that Olympic training center, you know, moved out there after high school and, you know, didn't have an emphasis on school, didn't have an emphasis on friends, social relation, nothing. Olympics, that's all I cared about. And, you know, I broke, I broke my L5, I broke one side of it. It laid me up, like I couldn't walk, couldn't train anything and get back into the gym like a week later, you know, I'm kind of limping, limping in and then other side goes and it's too late to withdraw from the competition. I was flying to Romania a week later for the junior world championships. This is, I'm looking at this like I'm on my way. This is a stepping stone to get on the Olympic team. And you know, I'm, I'm broken. I don't know what's wrong with me yet. I haven't gotten any scans, x-rays, a diagnosis, nothing. And, but I know something's wrong and compete and it's just kind of like didn't know what was wrong but I knew it wasn't like a little tweak or a strain something felt unstable and anyways you know going to get diagnosed and it was a low low point because I had I had no other identity to anyone that knew me from high school I was the kid that was going to the Olympics to my family, it's like how, every t every family member I saw, it's how's that Olympic journey? How, how's your training going? How's your competing going? Where are you competing next? That was it. There was nothing else to me. Nothing else mattered to me. And seeing that, like, you're not prepared for an injury. You don't anticipate an injury coming. It just happens. You go from feeling like a superhero, you're hitting personal records, you're doing great to just boom, you can't walk, you're laid up. And you know, when I found out what was injured, I got, I was in a full torso brace for like three months, couldn't do anything. And then I'm going in for the doctor's appointment and I, what put me to my lowest low was I'm excited. I've been in this torso brace for three months, going to the doctor's appointment. I think he's gonna tell me, you're good to go, take off that brace, get back to training. And then he tells me, nothing's healed yet. You need to keep the brace on for another month. And then I go back to the training center to talk to the coach who, he was a, like an interim coach. I didn't know him, I hadn't worked with him and I'm having to tell him I still can't train. My back's still broken. They don't know what to do next. And this is a man that, this is one of my first conversations with him. So he doesn't care about me on a personal level. We don't know each other. And then I don't have anyone to turn to, to like cry on their shoulder for them to build me back up. And I have nothing to turn to. If I'm not weightlifting, I'm sitting in my dorm room, twiddling my thumbs waiting for the next training session. And so that's just where I saw everything get stripped away. And that, and that molded me moving forward. I was like, I need to get an education. I need to have values. I need to have hobbies outside of the gym. And I carried those values, you know, so I went to school, I got surgery, I came back from that. But then school was an emphasis because I was like, my sports career will be over at some point. It's, it can be over like that. You can plan it, you can not plan it. It's going to happen. And so, you know, that molded me moving forward. You know, I put a huge emphasis on surrounding myself with people that love me unconditionally. It doesn't matter on the job title I have, my accomplishments, my sports career, nothing. 
keep people around you that are going to support you. Um, get an education. So, you know, I went, got an engineering degree, a business degree, like, so that the day all of this was over and nothing ever worked out, I got a fallback plan that's not bad. Um, but yeah, you know, it just kind of molded everything, but it took me from that low, low moment of crying to this guy who is my coach that doesn't care too much about me. Um, and me just not even like, okay, the road ahead is going to be tough, but not even knowing what the road ahead is. I don't even know if there is a road ahead. You know, I, I'm getting surgical consults and they're telling me like your weightlifting career is over. That's at least of your worries. Like you're never going to jog again. Like you cannot do anything load bearing. You can't run. You can't twist your back. You are, you can sit at a desk and just hearing that going from like, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to go to the Olympics to hearing you can sit in a cubicle. It was just like, this isn't an option. This isn't, this isn't going to be my life. Um, so, you know, going from hearing that, that option to getting the surgery and just be like, nope, don't care. Like I've broken my back once and I'm still here to like, okay, I broke my back and I came back. Like what else, what else can you throw at me? That's going to stop me. No, I'll, you throw another obstacle in my way. I'll get over that one too. So, you know, going from that hopeless low of your sports career is over, your fitness career is over to then coming back and competing and bit by bit, you know, getting a little bit faster, lifting a little bit more, doing a little bit more high skilled stuff and gaining that trust and that ability back. Uh, yeah, it, it, it was, it never even crossed my mind when I was getting these consults of what life after surgery was going to be like. Yeah. You just wanted to run, right? You want to be able to like be active, you know, I, I just remember thinking like the very, the obvious, very first devastating thing was thinking my Olympic dream is over. Yeah. That's done. What else do I have in my life? Um, to then thinking bigger picture of, I want to have, I want to have a family. I want to have kids. How am I going to play in the yard with them? If I, if I can't run or I'm always worried about my back slipping, well, how am I going to play with kids? You know? Um, so ne never mind becoming the world champion in anything. I just wanted a functional life. <laughs> so, you know, we're, we're talking, we're talking about this whole idea of broken to best and you know, that journey, you know, and that low, low to now this like super high, high T talk a little bit about this. Like, I think it's, um, it's, you know, I think we could talk about kind of how it comes to life, but yeah, you know, the whole Kintsugi idea. Um, and what, what did you identify with this? Like, you know, we have this awesome gift that, you know, your friends from Nike yeah. sent you a coffee, you know, set with, with these, but tell them a little bit about that. Yeah. You know, I, I was kind of told about it of someone said it to me of like, man, the story, it's kind of like this know how to describe like this Japanese art form of you know if a piece of pottery like a bowl or something got broken it's now seen as worthless you know it doesn't serve its purpose it can't do anything but then you know it's pieced back together with like gold solder and then after that process now it's beautiful it's seen as a piece of art it's more valuable than it was before it was ever broken and they kind of said that they're like, oh, your story kind of reminds me of that, of you were broken. You, you didn't have a purpose anymore. And then you got some hardware put in and you had this whole rebuilding process. And then you became world champion. You know, you, you had more value. You were better than you were before that injury and that repair. And I remember hearing that story and I was, and then it, it just kind of obviously struck very close to home for me. 
and then I just kind of ran with that of, you know, that's kind of the story I played in my head of like, I'm built better now than I was before. You know, I'm, I'm better at what I do now than I was before this injury, you know, whether it's because my back's actually stronger now or because of the life lessons that I learned from it or like, you know, just this grit that I got from it of, I broke my back and, and bounced back. Like, what else can you throw at me that's going to derail me? There's not much worse than that. So, you know, whatever factor it was, um, I just really related to that story. It is super cool. <clears throat> um, talk about Nike. You know, you, you know, I remember it's funny, like when we were sort of starting out at the beginning and you had your first games experience, you know, it was a goal of yours, right? Like you're, you know, I think you looked at it and like, you know, you grew up a Nike kid, you know, you wore Air Max 90s and what, what, what is that, what does that meant to your journey? You know, having their support, thinking about like the evolution of the shoe too, right? Like, you know, um, it's a tool in your chest. Now. Yeah. You know, what, what has that been like for you? You know, early on, it was very strange. Um, you know, like the first offer, the first time we spoke to them and, you know, they expressed an interest and wanted to work with me. And I remember going back, I think I was talking to my dad and I was like, yeah, you know, like Nike wants to talk. And he's like, Nike? I'm like, yeah. He's like Nike, Nike? And I was like, yeah, there's only, there's only one. And it was just so hard to fathom being partnered with a brand that's that globally known and loved. Like a few years prior, I was just a kid in a classroom and then I found this thing that I wanted to dedicate everything to. Um, and you know, it's a huge pat on the back of uh, you're doing things right if you have the attention of someone like the Nikes of the world. And, you know, it is just crazy, you know, A, having the opportunity, B, getting their attention. But then finally, like, after I started working with them, you know, going into meetings with them and they're asking you questions, they're taking your input. And, you know, it, when they're, they're asking these questions, you know, you kind of wonder like, ah, oh, do they actually care? Like I kind of figured like, oh, they must have their, they know, they already know what they want to do. And now they're just trying to make us feel good, make us feel like we have input. And I remember from the Metcon one, they're like, what could be better? And I remember sh telling them, like giving them some things like the heel clip, the plastic heel clip. I was like, put a plastic loop around the back so we can slide up on handstand pushups better. And then it was weeks later they gave me one with a plastic heel clip and I was like, oh my gosh, how'd you make it that fast? You know, you figure Nike's just such a big ship that it takes a year to steer it in, in a different direction. And they were just boom, boom, so quick with it. And I was like, oh my God, like, okay, you guys are really looking to be the absolute best and you're pulling all your resources. And then even as a resource for me of, hey guys, I need to talk to someone that's a specialist in this. And they're like, yep, we got the best in the world. There you go. Have a conversation. And I would get all my questions answered. Um, you know, whether it's working from, you know, one of the best power strength coaches or working with one of the best marathon runners, they have the resources. I remember having to do a competition where I couldn't wear Nike shoes. They weren't allowed. And I told them, I'm like, I have to wear a brand new shoe. I haven't worn, I, I've never trained in this shoe. And they took it and they gutted it and they replicated the Metcon interior inside the shell of the other shoe so that when I competed, it felt like I did in training. And I was like, oh, I didn't even know this was possible, but they just have the resources to, and they want the athlete to have the best performance possible. And so it's been, it's been incredible. Um, I'm very proud to say that, you know, I've been with them since 
they're, they're the sponsor I've been with the longest. I was with them so early on. When I first signed with them, they were willing to work with uh, like some existing sponsors that I already had. So they were very accommodating. So it's just been, I'm glad they've been in my corner since, since very early on. <clears throat> What's it like, you know, we, we have your third shoe on our feet right now. What's it, what's it, I remember, you know, it's funny. I remember having conversations with you about wearing your own shoe. And not, yeah. <laughs> not, a whole, not a whole lot of people in the world can relate to how you deal with having your own shoe and whether you wear it or not. There's probably like, you know, 50 in history, but um, what's it, what's it meant to, they've celebrated you every year here now we're, you know, we've, we're three deep. Um, maybe there's a fourth, I don't know. You can <laughs> tell everybody that, but. What's it like to have, your, I mean, your signature's on that. It celebrates your victories on it. The, and, and there's a lot of thought that goes into that shoe. It's, it's, I don't even know how to describe it. It's very odd. Um, I'm very proud of it. But I mean, my first, I think my first shoe or two, I never wore. You know, I would get my pair and, you know, I would get them framed or put into a shadow box and like I would put them on the shelf and then that was the end of it. And, you know, people would ask me, oh, do you ever wear it? I'm like, no, I can't wear my own shoe. Like, I, it just seems so odd to me. And, you know, I didn't, I would rather preserve it and just have it on a shelf to, to show kids or grandkids or wh whoever it is down the road. Um, but that was an accomplishment that I'm like, there's a timestamp on this. It's like, there's only a limited number of these. I want to make sure that I keep them. I want, I want to show people. I want to share that with the people in my life. Um, it wasn't until the third edition of my shoe that I ever wore them. And even that, I think, I think it was a bit of a discussion with Nike of them telling me you're wearing the shoe <laughs> and I you know I, I i i was not comfortable with it at first because i was like what are people going to think i'm wearing my own shoe oh like and then and then i had a conversation with someone that's in the sports world and has dealt with stuff like this and he's telling me he's like why would you not wear your own shoe he's like you earn that be proud of that like show it off like and i was like oh Okay, I never kind of looked looked at it in that way, and now now it's all I ever wear. <laughs> What's we we have a fourth coming? We do. Oh, we do have a. Anything you want to share? Ah, uh, I it's the one that I'm most excited about. It is very bold, and it is very cool. But other than that, you got to wait. Ooh. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I think, you know, just kind of wrapping this up, I think, you know, obviously there's, and I know this, and, you know, being around you and getting to, like, there's so much more for you, right? Like, and you're very comfortable not competing. People probably want to know if that will ever kind of come across again, you know, something that you'll think about doing again. But, you know, um, I think you would probably say, like, the journey's just beginning, right? You have so many things you want to accomplish. Um, you know, we've talked about programming, mentoring. Um, you know, is there, any, is there anything big coming up? Like, you know, um, is, there, is there anything that, you know, you're most excited about? Like, you know, and, and maybe even, like, you know, are you excited to go to the games this year and, and be a spectator? Are you nervous about that? Like, what, what's, what's, what's that going to be? You know, like? thing, things like attending competitions or, you know, working with other athletes, doing programming, even, even stuff like running my businesses or growing my businesses, in the grand scheme of things, those things are very small. Um, I look forward to them. I love dedicating time and energy to them. I love doing the best job that I can with them. But in the grand scheme, the things I've learned over the years, you know, it's, it's friends and family that matter. Um, so, you know, with, with being around Sammy, you know, this is, we, we finally get to have a normal relationship. Our relationship isn't just revolved around 
my training, my competing, my needs. Um, so I'm just excited to like be an active member in these relationships. Um, I know that's not the answer that people want to hear, but you know, like attending competition, that's a very, it's a very fun thing. It's entertaining. But if that got stripped away, you know, my life's the same, you know, it's the things that matter are what's at home. What, how's your, how's your internal happiness? Not just what's the happiness that people see. Um, but you know, obviously very excited to, to build the businesses, to grow them, we'll see to what extent, what level that they get. Um, and just branching out and dedicating more time to anything that kind of piques my interest, you know, anything that I have had as a hobby are things that are very quick at home. Don't take much time. Don't take much energy because I didn't want to take anything away from training, but now, now I have nothing but time. So. You get to see actually what the zoo of the CrossFit Games is. Yes, yeah, I've never, I have never spectated the games. The first year I competed at regionals, I had no idea what was going on. And so when I, I went to regionals, I didn't qualify for the games. That was the end of the story. I just kind of walked away. And I remember people asking me questions and telling me about what certain events. Oh, did you see this competitor do this? I didn't, I didn't even know any of the competitors' names. And I was kind of like, well, oh, like, don't care. And then it went from that to, you're going to the games, get ready. Um, so I've never watched a CrossFit Games. So this is, this is a first for me. It's funny, like, and I've got to experience it with you, but you know, and myself too this year, like I'll be, actually going to the CrossFit Games, not underneath with you. Yeah. It's, um, but I got to see both because I'm running back and forth, right? It's like, I'm excited for you to see it. It's like, there's a lot going on that you have no idea about, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, over the last couple of years, I've been down, been down to Wadapalooza for the last couple of years, but then that was half vacation, half watching the competition. But the last couple of weeks, I've gone to sanctionals and I've, gone to sanctionals to be solely at the sanctional to watch competitors and you know be a part of it but not from the competition floor uh and it, it's so much more fun than i anticipated and i was like oh okay there's still one more level to go up we can go to the games that's the that's the big show so i'm i'm really excited for it uh you know especially knowing so many of the competitors on the floor that I've been close with and, you know, they've been my competitors. So this would be the first time that I'm hoping they get PRs. I'm hoping that they that they crush it and have the performance of their lifetime because it doesn't negatively affect me, you know? So I, I'm excited to be there as a fan and, and cheer on some friends. We um, opened up you know, and gave access to your community a little bit in, at these other events, uh, the semifinal events. And we're going to do that at the games as well. A little more uh, condensed. Yeah. Oh, obviously, we got a little out of control yeah. at West Coast Club. Like 200 <laughs> yeah, two, 200 people working out at once. Yeah, that's, you know? uh, Sammy was a rock star and helped and made sure everybody got their fitness in. Um, but we're going we're gonna to do some fun stuff like that in, in Madison, right? Like we're going to go to a gym in the morning and work some people out that yeah. you know, might even be some – Cool gifts like shirts like this available yeah. for people, but uh, and your partners are going to help out with that. Um, so you know, tell people a little bit about what Madison will be from you. Like you know, you'll, you'll obviously yeah, be you're appearing the, a little on site. Yeah, the, the the conversations are being had right now. We're trying to figure out what is you know practical and what is you know realistic. Um, our community workout at West Coast Classic it went off great. But it was a learning curve of like, okay, 200 people is too many people. Because not only you know, is it super crowded, there's so many moving parts. The biggest part I didn't enjoy about it was I couldn't have an conversations with people. I couldn't give coaching tips. You know, anyone can scribble up a workout on the wall and say three, two, one, go, and just watch everyone you know, spike their heart rate up and get after it. But if I'm doing that, I want, I want I want to be as good as I can be at it. And so, you know, having a smaller group where I can 
give individual coaching where it's needed. At the end of the workout, you know, having some fun conversations, answering some questions, you know, just getting to know the people that are there. Um, that's important to me. So, you know, like when the one we did at Granite Games, it was right at that fine line. I think we had like 180 to 100 people. So I was still able to give some coaching cues and have some conversations, but even that was a bit too big. And then West Coast Classic, you know, it just, we had a big group and then more people showed up. Uh, and so that one, I, I, if I'm gonna be a part of the community, I wanna be a part of the community. I don't wanna just be slapping a workout up and watching people hit it. I wanna help them. I want to, you know, try to, educate them on certain things or try to make them better so that when they go home they're taking more than just a cool story of like oh that i met matt like oh no matt gave me this tip a while back and now i can apply it into my training so we're figuring out you know can we get a whole access to an entire gym how many mornings in a row can we do this how many people have an interest in doing it you know so we're figuring out the logistics but ideally we're going to be running running some workouts, getting to know some people, and uh, hopefully hopefully getting some good workouts in. Yeah, stay tuned. We will definitely be putting something out where you all can, you know, get your name in and sign up and come work out. Um, it, you know, it's people are hearing what we know and experience the most, which is like how you applied your, you know, how you work so hard towards your goals and your career, which is now what you want to do with people, is you're not happy about 200 people not getting to get coached, mm -hmm. you know? which is super cool. So we'll see everybody in Madison. Well, th thanks for sitting down. Um, I mean, I, I love these opportunities to let people hear what we all get to experience on a daily basis. We're so proud of you. Uh, and uh, I'm like, I couldn't be more, you know, it's funny, like a lot of people are sad you retired. Um, I'm, I, you know, I and Sammy are probably closest to this. I'm not, and, and that's not like a celebration of like, you know, I was like, you know, it was time, right? Like you did what you wanted to do and set out to do because I now get to like spend some time with you. Sammy does doing all other fun things. Yeah. Um, so we're proud of you. Nike's proud of you. Um, you know, and uh, I'm just pumped to see what's next. Me too. Thank you. <laughs>